I am Dr. Anjana Agarwal talking on human and non-human resources. We have the objectives for this lesson are understanding the resources and its classification, learning about the characteristics of resources, finding ways for maximum utilization of available resources. What are resources? Resources are the means used to attain goals or fulfill the needs and desires. Resources includes all living and non-living things. You can see this picture. The lady standing is a human resource and the things lying around are non-human, non-living things. Resources mainly are two types, human resources and non-human resources. Human resources are the people who work to achieve the goal. Some of them are inherent. They can also be developed with learning and practice. They vary from person to person. Non-human resources are the things, goods and places which are purchased or utilized by the people. They can be used as material items, places and infrastructure. They vary from place to place. What are types of resources? We have learned two types. Human resources are time, energy, skill, abilities and knowledge. And non-human resources, money, house, material goods, community facilities like market, hospital, school, park, station, etc. You can see this picture, variety of human resources, time can be an hour, day, months, years, etc. which we count through a work clock or watch. We need the energy to do the work, we learn the knowledge, develop the skill and abilities for doing our work like cooking, stitching, singing, dancing, swimming, they are all human resources. Some of the non-human resources can be money, which you get from salary, rent, interest from saving banks, accounts, etc. There is another non-human resources which is infrastructure in the form of house for living and working. There are material goods like household equipments, cars, etc. There are community facilities like park, hospitals roads, bus, etc. Let us understand human and non-human resources, how they are related and how they are used to do the activities. You can see some pictures to understand these resources. This young boy in first picture has the knowledge of tailoring. This is a human resource and also has the ma swing machine that is non-human resource. In another picture, two young girls are practicing to become chef. Kitchen for them is a non-human resource and practice is a human resource. In third picture, the teacher is training other girls the skills of making toys for sale. Skill is the human resource, a material for toy making and the place where they are sitting is non-human resource. Now we will understand different characteristics of resources. Resources are useful, resources are limited in supply, resources are interrelated, resources have alternative uses and resources can be substituted. Now we will learn one by one. Resources are useful. In these pictures, you are seeing many resources which are part of our daily life and they are very useful for healthy living. There is sunlight which feeds the plant and we get food and from that we cook the balanced diet and special foods for different occasions, for different age groups and health conditions. We need variety of clothes to wear and for other purposes. We need a skill to cook the food, stretch the garment, 
construct the home and many more. In today's world of technical advancement, we have television in our homes for entertainment and also hear the news around the world. We cannot forget one of the most useful resources, water, without which we cannot survive. Another characteristic is resources are limited in supply. Time is very precious resource which is available only 24 hours in a day for everyone. So, time available for each activity in life is limited. One person may be very rich, but there is also some limitations in terms of money, luxuries and other items. Observe a person who get certain amount of money through salary and has limited savings which hardly suffice the increasing demand of the family. You can have the house, car, number of fancy clothes, but they are also limited in counts. Electric supply is limited. You may use unlimited the moment you pay the bill for unlimited use of the electric gadgets and equipment, you will learn to use that also in limited amount. Everywhere you find the limitations in availability of the resources. So, be careful. Third characteristics is resources are interrelated. You can see these pictures in light and electric gadgets. Many households have variety of electric equipments such as TV, fridge, mixer, toaster, washing machine, cooler, AC, bulbs, lights and many more. But Without electric supply, all these electric equipments are useless and cannot be used at all. With the same thing, we will talk now, resources have alternative use. If electricity is not available, then you have to find some other solution. Surplus availability of mangoes in season can become converted into pickle or other preserved food items. If you do not have any gas supply to cook the food, then what you will do? You will either find some other alternative, go outside or bring some other material or use any other source of fuel to cook the food. The sari is old, what you will do it? You can use that to make the dresses, cushion covers and here you will use the skill as a human resource. See the advancement in solar energy which has also found the alternative use in street light and battery for the car. There are numerous examples and you can think many of them. Resources can be substituted. We are discussing right now the alternative use. See how resources are replaced with passage of time or need or the hour. From tungsten bulb to LED lantern, from gas fuel to wood fuel to cook the food. So, we have learned different characteristics of the resources. We have to learn, understand and practice to create the resources to enhance the availability as it has been done by using the solar cell to run your household equipments and other things. Conserve the resources, save the resources like save the energy, this means lot to you. So, you can put the banner here and there, please switch off the lights on your way out. This is a precious resource. I repeat all the characteristics of resources. They are useful, sub can be substituted, have alternative use, they are limited and interrelated. Now we will learn about the maximum utilization of resources. First, you must identify all available resources to you. You can use only needed amount of resources, so you must avoid wastage. You can see this picture 
in one picture availability of resources are limited, but you should not waste these resources otherwise these breads get be, could be used by some other person. Another way to substitute less expensive resource for more expensive one, the work is same in this picture, there are two things, one is using the electricity for mopping the floor, another is using the water and hand. Another way is to develop the habit of using the same resource for some other purpose. Next you can see learn the ways to make the resources last longer. So, you have to keep the things useful, if you need the repairing get it done in time and there are many things as I talked about the surplus material you can preserve them. You must try to share the resources and do not deprive others of resources. What you can do? You must remember and adopt 3 R formula, reduce, reuse and recycle. Let us learn what we can reduce, reuse and recycle. In today's world, we can use paper and plastic which are precious as well as being used everywhere in homes, schools, offices and otherwise. So, you must reduce the use of unnecessary paper and unnecessary use of plastics. We can reuse the paper and plastic bins, bottles etc. for other purposes you have just learned. You can also use or recycle paper and plastic. This is how you can use your resources whatever available to you to the maximum satisfaction and utilization. Now we will talk about the management. Let us understand or define the management. Management is a process of using available resources to achieve the goal or fulfill the desire. I repeat, management is a process of using available resources to achieve the goal or fulfill the desires. What is the significance of management? Why it is so important? Because it helps to reach your goal and fulfill the needs and the desires. It helps to utilize the resources maximally and avoid wastage of resources. It increases the efficiency in work and get more work output within the given resources. It makes the life more systematic and achieve better standards of life. As I said that management is a process. So, now we will understand the steps in the management process. There are four steps, number one planning, number two organizing, number three controlling and number four evaluating. Let us understand what does it mean. Planning includes listing of tasks and sequencing them, organizing means deciding who will do what, when and how and implementing means putting the plan into action, real doing the work and evaluating what went wrong or right and how to improve. Let us detail about each of it and on top you will see always the four steps planning, organizing, controlling and evaluating. Planning is the process of advanced thinking to achieve the desired goal or objective. So, you have to think hard before action. Let us see, it is a crucial before starting any activity. So, you have to identify the goal or objective of the activity to be done. It is a systematic development of the action program. 
it involves the arrangement of resources to do the task. There are five things you have to remember always, what, who, how, when and what. What is to be done? Who will do the work? How it will be done? And when it will be done? And what resources will be used? Again I repeat, planning includes listing of the activities, sequencing them, providing flexibility and identifying the resources available and delegating that activities and it is always better to write the plan on paper. And why it is so important because it saves time, money and unnecessary work. Second step is organizing. Organizing means assembling the resources and fixing the responsibilities to people involved in the activities so that the plan can be carried out properly. Organizing ensures that all the planned work gets done in time. There is proper distribution of work, the knowledge and skills are rightly and maximally used. Work gets finished on time, important resources are saved, then only planning is successful. But at the same time, you have to control. Controlling means the carrying out the activities as per the plan. Then only the plan can be executed well. It involves the actions for the progress of plan, makes adjustments, provides flexibility when any changes are required for better implementation of the work. Evaluating is the last step but very important at every step where we are so you can measure the evaluation. How can we get on track again so do the correction? Where we plan to be evaluation? Evaluation is done at each step of the management planning. Evaluation is done, whether planning is going right or wrong. Organizing, whether everything is done as per the plan, we are not deviating or missing anything. Then controlling, we are not wasting any kind of resources to get the work done. Evaluation at every step helps to understand the weaknesses and mistakes so that they are checked and corrected in time and are not repeated in future. Evaluation can save money, time and energy and avoid wastage of other resources. Mistakes can be corrected and they should not be repeated in future. Now we will talk about motivating factors in management. There are three values, goals and standards. Now value, values are moral principles or beliefs that a person holds about some aspect of life. For example, respect each other. Good values are known by everyone but needs to be practiced also and some of them are honesty, punctuality, kindness sincerity, regularity, polite and positive attitude. It motivates to behave in a particular way. Now we will talk about the standards. Standards is an accepted level of quality. We use this term in variety of ways, but here we are talking to reach or improve the goal we want to achieve. Standards inbuilt values in the person and compels him or her to perform actions up to the mark and feel the desirable satisfaction. Some standards are rigid, but some are flexible. These should not vary much from situation to situation. 
if you win some you can lose some but if you have a positive attitude you always win now we'll talk about the goals goals are the final objective that we want to achieve and work hard for that so we have to set the goal and goal setting is a smart work s stands for specific m stands for measurable a stands for attainable r stands for relevant and t stands for time bound so if you smartly set your goal you can achieve the goal in the time goals grow out of our value needs and desires accomplishing the goals gives us a sense of achievement happiness and satisfaction that is why you are setting the goal on the other hand goals can be short term and can be long term short term means you have to reach the office in time so it is a everyday goal it is called short term goal there are long term goal then one person has to become a doctor or engineer or photographer who is whatever it is so they are called long term it may require some years so they can be achieved in minutes hours years depending upon the need and the time taken in completing the task or reaching the goal or objective some goals are achieved more easily than others so this is important that will help you to set the goal let us have a example value goal and standard cleanliness is an attitude and a behavior and you have set the goal to clean the house and you will also think of the quality for cleaning standards second example for value goal and standards value is your health and you have to maintain that health is your goal and you have to set the standards how much how what quality of food you will do you will eat what kind of exercises you will do to maintain that goal now we will talk about the decision making what is decision decision is a selection of a course of action among alternative choices there are so many choices as you can see in this picture which way to go it is about taking the firm decision to take future course of actions there are certain steps in decision making first you identify the problem then you find out the information for b plan or other possibilities then evaluate all the alternative actions then select the best course of action you can do it and use this decision making at every step of management because every step is interrelated you will have to do the decision making at the step of planning then organizing and implementing and if you take the firm decision that will help you to get the evaluation done and achieve the planning more successfully i hope you have understood the lesson on human and non human resources i just summarize it there are two type of resources human and non human resources are the things places or the people which we you make the availability of work doing the work right in time and there are characteristics of resources interrelated they are useful can be substituted etc and you must also learn some of the ways to maximize the use of available resources and you must remember the reduce reuse and recycle formula to save the resources and utilize them maximum in our daily life this is what you have learned in four steps of management thank you